Hey there, boys and girls, and welcome to episode 249 of Sonic Boom TV. This episode is a little, little bit shorter than the last few, uh, and uh, it is strictly bangers, as they say, according to whoever, right? Um, no, it's really, um, I, got, I got three records in, uh, two of them are kind of like important records to me some people might say grail records um but I i'm not into that whole terminology or whatever um and then i've got a dvd and if if the time is not going too bad i may show the seether albums that i got the other day because i still haven't opened them um but uh if not um i feel like it's going a little too long for this one i'll just hold off on that the next episode is 250 i should do something special for that i don't have anything really planned um, I wasn't paying attention to what number I was on, you know, in my brain. So, um, I just don't have anything planned for it. So let's, let's start off, uh, with the DVD I got just to get rid of that, get it out of the way. Um, this came from VC Vinyl's $5 show. The, the seller is Lila. Um, young girl, probably in her twenties. Uh, she's on, not that you need to know that, uh, but, uh, she's, uh, in her, uh, she's usually works on Tuesdays and Fridays. Fridays, I think, uh, 9 a.m. around that, you know, central time, and she goes for a couple hours, and she sells records, CDs, cassettes, movies sometimes, uh, you know, and everything usually starts at, uh, at five dollars. Every now and again, she, she can run some CDs for a dollar, um, which I've taken advantage of a few times, uh, and then, um, she came into some, uh, some movies recently, like, there's a horror movie, Trick or Treat. I got that one on the way because it was five bucks. Um, but the first thing I got, and this one cost me six dollars. Uh, VC Vinyl had the, a vinyl uh, record of this, um, but uh, it's Queen, uh, Rock and Rock Montreal, and Live Aid. Um, they had a, a a record of this, but it was just the Rock Montreal part, I believe. I don't think the Live Aid stuff is on there, which Live Aid is the reason I wanted this because that, that was a great performance. Uh, you know, some consider it the greatest performance ever. Uh, the, um, but uh, I didn't buy the record because they were asking like 40 bucks to start and then I think it was going up a little bit from there. Um, and I, I just don't want to pay that much for, for that, um, which I, I'd never heard it before. So I got the video, so I almost don't need it, you know. Um, but the uh, hype sticker says digitally restored picture newly mixed dts hd surround sound features brand new co commentary from brian may and roger taylor complete live age complete live aid performance never before seen live live aid rehearsal footage and previously unreleased live aid interview with the band and ooh, i'm not sure how many songs they did at live aid i know it's um, at least three, but I think it was probably about six or something because I don't believe uh, the bands got to do full a full concert at Live Aid. It was so long ago. It was like in, I guess in the 80s. I mean, um, I remember seeing it though. Like, uh, at least I remember seeing them, um, uh, you know, their performance on MTV, I believe. I don't know if it was, if I saw the whole concert or not. Um, that would be great to get if you could. Um, but anyway, this was six bucks. So that was well worth it, I think. Um, you know, and, and um, you know, I don't know what all songs are on here. It doesn't have a track listing on the back. It's got a little write up, but I'm not gonna read all that to you guys. Uh, you know, um, but it, there's no track listing. So uh, let me let me bust it open and see what's on the inside. Maybe there is a track listing. Um, otherwise, I'm just gonna have to watch it. Uh, and find out. Save my little hype sticker. little booklets got it inside is that with that blu-ray back of that is that it had the little booklet in there it's you rarely see these things in in, in movies anymore you know when if you even buy movies anymore but uh they're, they're so uh they don't they don't do this well this is what i used to love about dvds and stuff that you'd open it up and there would be a little booklet and sometimes it would just be, you know, the scenes of the movie. But other times, 
it would be uh you know like a whole a little booklet like this with all kind of stuff this has got a lot of photos it looks like uh i don't eat she had a bunch of these uh i think she might have sold them all by now but uh but I didn't buy the first day she I saw them, and then the next time I was like, you know what? I better get one of those, because uh, I don't know if I'll find it for that cheap. And some of them went for like 15 bucks or something, and people were, this is the track listing. So we've got the Live Aid track listing and the Queen Rocket Montreal. So let me just go over that intro. We will rock you fast, whatever that means. I guess the fast version. Let me Let me entertain you, play the game, somebody to love, Killer Queen. I'm in love with my car, get down, make love, save me, now I'm here, dragon attack, uh, now I'm here, reprise, love of my life, under pressure, keep your, keep yourself alive, drum and timpani solo, guitar solo, crazy little thing called love, jailhouse rock, bohemian rhapsody, uh, tie your mother down, another one bites the dust, sheer heart attack, we will rock you. We are the champions, and God save the queen. So that's a that's a pretty impressive list, uh, you know, track list uh, for Queen. Um, it's 26 songs, including the intro. I don't know what the intro is. Probably somebody talking. And then Live Aid has Bohemian Rhapsody, Radio Gaga, Hammer to Fall, Crazy Little Thing Called Love. We will rock you, and we are the champions. Um, and then, is this the world we created? Is separated from that? I don't know. There's six songs like I thought. But then there's another one, so I'll let you see. Let's see. Well, that's the that's the Montreal, and then that's Canada. Oh, you can't see it too good, can you? That's the uh, Live Aid. If I can get that light to not shine there, but but you see this this song right here is separated from the main. So I don't know if that's just an additional track uh, from something else, or 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 what, or maybe it's a rehearsal thing or something. But we'll we'll see when I get to that. Um, somebody out there might know. Uh, but that was that. So next up, this is a person. I got this from a person that I said their name wrong a couple times, and I just wanted to uh, get it right, um, you know, on this one because uh, you know she's one of my Facebook friends. I mean, not, not Facebook. Uh, well, she's Instagram, I guess. But uh, but she's on my whatnot, uh, and it's Forevermore 1982. Her her store still I, I, it's it's Best Coast music, I think. Um, she didn't put, it's not on the receipt, but it's, it's definitely Forevermore 1982. So F-O-R-E-V-E-R-M-O-R-E -E 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 1982. That's her screen name on, on, uh, whatnot. So if you're looking for a lot of pop stuff, Taylor Swift, that kind of stuff, look her up. She's got stuff. It's got all kinds of stuff for you. Some of it's rare. Some of it's, you know, common, whatever. It's got a lot of stuff, but she does get some rock stuff and she had one in her store. And I had one a ten dollar uh, coupon from her, so I picked up one the one rock record she had that I needed, uh, and it is ZZ Top Eliminator. Um, I've never owned this in my life. Um, I've seen it several times, but it's always been damaged beyond repair. Uh, the the or the record was okay, but the cover was torn. I like this cover. I, I've always liked this cover. Um, but this has it says ZZ Top's nineteen eighty three album. With sales of over 10 million, 10 million copies on red colored vinyl includes "Give Me All You Love" and "Sharp Dressed Man" and "Legs." Those three were were the, like what introduced me to to uh, ZZ Top back in the day when I was probably uh, this is 1983, so I was probably 12 when you know 11 or 12. Um, and we just thought this car was amazing. Those guys were crazy with their long beards down to wherever. Uh, and and this you know these songs were fun and uh, so we loved it um, and, the, and the car uh, was in I think two or three videos um, but we've got that um, so now I have probably four ZZ Top albums the two I really wanted um, one's got a damaged cover but uh, two I really wanted and then two other ones I think that I don't know too much about one of them's pretty scratched up uh, but give me all your love and got me under pressure. Sharp dressed man. I need you tonight. I got the six legs, thugs, thug, one it knows s. Uh, TV dinners, dirty dog. If I could uh, only flag her down and bad girl. So I don't. I'm not familiar with a lot of this album, but I know the three three hits and you know that that 
qualifies as banger status, right? And there's that car. Um, and we got some seriously red vinyl. Uh, you get the label X1 and X2. So maybe that means side one, side two. I don't know. Um, pretty cool, though. Pretty cool. Um, so anyway, I got this for 15 because it was 25 and she had a $10 discount. Um, so that worked out really well. I was thinking about buying it when it was when I had didn't even have the disc the, the discount and I put it off for a week for whatever reason and then the next week I got the ten dollars and I needed to be able to spend it and I didn't have a chance until I saw that. So I went back to that. I mean so anyway she also sent me some stickers. We got this little uh Hawaiian whatever that you know, Aloha, Love, whatever, I guess. And then we got two other stickers. One that says, Yikes. And one that says, Zeta. I don't know what Zeta means, but I'm into it, right? Zeta. So those are good. She's got a co-host with her, too. His name is Danny something or other. And they work together. They're best coast, because one's on the East Coast, or West Coast and East Coast. And, you know, they do what they do. So next... Uh, as I've mentioned before, VC Vinyl uh, has been doing this thing where they, every show they got 10, uh, I don't know why I did quotes there, 10, uh, they can sell 10 specialty items that they have. And they've got a, a bunch of cases of just kind of random records. Some of them are one-off records. Some of them are, they have several copies of. Some of them uh they don't know if they have more or not. I got a hair or something in my eye. That's why I keep playing with my eyes with the stuff here, guys. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, so they do 10, and it's, and it's kind of... It's okay that they do this. I just don't necessarily like the way they do it, because a lot of times they'll they'll put stuff up and like they're going to sell it that day, or and then they don't. And, and then people kind of wait around you know if you're sitting in a show waiting for somebody to run something for three hours you kind of want them to, to, to do it and if they don't it kind of upsets you and I got a little ticked off about it um, yesterday it wasn't that bad but he did run one of the ones I wanted and I did buy it <laughs> for probably more than it should have been um, but we'll get to that when I get it uh, but anyway so the one day and, and so a lot of this stuff they don't know what it's worth or anything and so they were running stuff, and they they kept like people kept saying, "Oh, that's this version, that's that version, whatever, whatever." And they had this Smashing Pumpkins Greatest Hits, first time vinyl release of Rotten Apples, the 2001 Greatest Hits Collection, two LPs, 180 grams. Now I have this on a CD, and I'm not going to be able to get to it. But the CD has, a, the, my CD anyway, I think I got a, I must have got a, a special edition of it. It has something called the Judas O, and it's got more songs. It's got like another whole CD of songs. Um, and I, I can't remember what's on that, but, but this, so anyway, they had this. And he kept starting it at $40. And I was like, dude, that, that is not a $40 record to start. You know, because their, their thing is to sell stuff cheaper then you can get it in the store. So if I pay forty dollars for this, and then I got to pay shipping, it's going to be shipping and tax. It's going to be over fifty for this. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. So I went on Walmart's website, and I didn't make a mistake. I'm, I'm coming up with my mistake here. I went on Walmart's website, and I looked it up, and I put in, you know, Smashing Pumpkins, uh, Greatest Hits, uh, LP. And there was a red version, the Walmart version. That one, I think, was 34 No, no, no. It was 36 I think. $36.99, maybe. Something like that. Still cheaper than 40 without, And I wouldn't have to pay tax and ship. I wouldn't have to pay shipping. I'd probably still have to pay tax. Um, but there was a $30 one. And it looked exactly like this. Except this picture was slightly different. Like it was the same photo shoot, just maybe a different... 
a different picture, you know, but like slightly, slightly different. I found out where the hair is on this. It's on the record. <laughs> uh, and it was like some kind of acoustic thing. So I ordered it not thinking, and it was 30, and I was like, oh, no. So I go back, and I was like, like an hour and a half after after I ordered, I was like, that's not the right record. And so I went and I canceled it. And that one was going to cost me like, I don't know, 35 something like that with shipping and, well, no shipping, but with tax and everything. So then I was like, no, this ain't it. So I went back and, I, and then there was another one that was black that I saw that was like $32. So I was still correct that there was a cheaper one. It just, it, it wasn't as cheap as I thought. It wasn't 30, it was like 32. So, but I said, no, I'm not doing this. I, I remembered that I had uh, some coupon, a coupon on Amazon. And so I don't remember how much I had on Amazon's, my coupon thing. And I don't remember, I don't even remember what the price of this was because they didn't send me a, 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 coup, a receipt with it, but it's, I'll have it if I go into my Amazon. I just can't do it because it's on my phone. Um, but, but anyway, I, but I paid $23 with shipping or free shipping with tax and everything for this. So I got it way cheaper. Uh, you know, I got $17 cheaper than his starting price. And I never seen him run it again after they did that because nobody bought it at, at 40, but, but of course they would. Um, and because people are, are bidding things up a little bit too high on some of these things that they're coming out with because it's like, Oh, we, this is the only one we have. And yeah, it is the only one you have, but if that person really wants to go get it, they could probably find it cheaper if you're going to start it that way. If you do the traditional VC vinyl thing where you kind of cut the price in half and then go from there, that's that's fair. Because if people bid it up from there, it's fair. But that's not what they were doing on, on some of these. Some of them they are, and I've got a couple good deals, so I'm not mad at them. I'm just, I'm just like, it's kind of frustrating if you wait. And because they show them sometimes, but you don't know when they're gonna sh they're gonna run them, and so you wait and you wait and you wait. And you don't know what the price is gonna be. You're waiting there, you're holding your money because you don't want to spend it on something else or whatever, and then you don't get it. So anyway, Smashing Pumpkins, uh, Greatest Hits, uh, Rotten Apples. I don't know why. First time on, on time vinyl release of Rotten Apples. I don't know why it's called Rotten Apples and Greatest Hits. Um, Rotten Apples, The Smashing Pumpkins, Greatest Hits. That's what it's called. So anyway, this has uh, Siva, or Siva, Rhinoceros, Drown, Cherub Rock, Today, Disarm, Landslide, Bullet with, Butterfl Bullet with Butterfly Wings, 1979, Zero, Tonight Tonight, I, Ava Adore, Perfect, The Everlasting Gaze, Stand Inside Your Love, Real Love, and Untitled. Now, the reason I wanted this, and I consider it kind of a banger, uh, is because I don't have any other Smashing Pumpkins on vinyl. I have a lot of Smashing Pumpkins on CD. I have some stuff that uh, was download-only kind of stuff. And I have MP3 stuff, but I don't have it. This is the first thing I had on vinyl, and this covers kind of a, the era that I really like the most. Um, it does. I didn't really like the Adore album that much, but but uh, it, it's only got a couple songs from that. Uh, so, but it's got my favorite songs and it's got some of the classic songs. So I would still like to get, you know, more of their stuff, but for now, this is going to be good. Um, and, uh, you know, help me get through my Smashing Pumpkins, uh, lows. I do have that, that thing I bought, that bootleg thing too as well. I'm sorry I did get that, but, but I've discredited that since they screwed me out of the first song. And if you'll have to go back and see one of my previous videos to find out the story of that. <clears throat> <coughs> Sorry, guys. I think I'm getting sick. I, was, I was, wasn't feeling too great when I started this video. I was supposed to start it about an hour ago, and I started feeling bad about an hour ago. And I was like, ah, I don't know if I'm going to do it. And then I did it. So here we are. So we've got this. I don't know if I showed the back cover and the track listing. Uh... I saw them live one time. Uh, they It was the final show of the Infinite Sadness. Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness tour. They played in New Orleans. They weren't supposed to play in New Orleans, but I think it was kind of Mardi Gras time. And so they decided they wanted to come here and end their tour. So they did. And uh, I remember 
I was going. This is this is like the first time you 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 run into when uh you might be considered creepy. But it wasn't me being creepy. I was just uh I was just going to a concert. So uh they were playing in New Orleans and I was planning on going. And um so I got I was like I'm getting I told my aunt that I was living with I'm gonna get tickets to this concert, uh, you know, whatever, whatever. So she starts talking to her friend who had a son that went to school with my cousin. Follow that? My and so my cousin's uh friend was this kid. He was probably 15, 15, 15, maybe 16, something like that. He wanted to go, but she wasn't going with him. His mom wasn't going with him. And I never asked. I don't know how. I think he asked my aunt or something. But this lady calls and is like, I'm like in college at this time. So I'm like, you know, I don't know when it was, but I got to be in my 20s, somewhere in my 20s, way older than this kid. And she calls up and she, and my aunt knew, but I didn't know that this kid wanted to go. And she calls up and asks my aunt, what does a 20 something year old man want to go to a concert with a 16 year old kid for? And my aunt just takes the phone away and she says, what does a 26 year old man want to do? Go, go to a concert with a kid with for or whatever, a 15 year old kid. And I was like, I don't want to go to a concert with a kid. I'm just going to a concert. Am I taking him? And my aunt said, you might be <laughs> if this lady doesn't come through the phone and kill you. And so uh, I was like, what is going on? So they talk and, and, and what it was is that I, I had no idea. So, but anyway, she, uh, they talk about like, oh, uh, you know, he wasn't trying to get this kid to go with him. He wasn't, he didn't even know. He said that my cousin must have talked to this kid and and then they talked to my my aunt and oh yeah he's probably going maybe you can ride with him this and that the lady ended up uh like buying him a ticket and then buying me like a t-shirt or whatever and she's like okay uh just a call when when you when you're leaving and i was like how are we gonna call her when we're leaving this because this is before cell phones and uh so we had to go find a pay phone so he could call his mom say, hey, we're, we're leaving and we'll be home within an hour. And sure enough, we were. And uh, anyway, long story short, after that, the kid had such a great time seeing Smashing Pumpkins play for like four hours because they played maybe an hour and a half and they were like, okay, this is all the hits we have. You can go home now. We're just going to play some crazy stuff that you don't know what it is. And he knew the song, the rest of the stuff, and I knew the rest of the stuff because we were pretty big Smashing Pumpkins fans back then. And um, man, it was so long, but they played forever. But the another one of my favorite bands from that era uh, is uh, oh no, Stacy's Mom People, whatever their name is. Uh, uh, they opened up, and the band called the Frogs opened up. And Frogs had a weird little CD. Um, I don't know if they ever. It was like an EP. I don't know if it ever came out. Um, any more with any more stuff, but uh, uh, anyway, that's a long, weird story that we don't really talk about. Hey, we got a vinyl right here with uh, Smashing Pumpkins on the on the label. I uh, rambled, and then the silver on the other side, the poly lined inner sleeve, uh, and the other one is exactly the same. So, we're gonna take it on the sleeve. Um, is that band called uh, Stacy's Mom? got it going on whatever there are that band uh it's gonna come to me uh much later after this video is over i've got almost everything they put out um some of it on vinyl some of it on cd i don't know it's too late guys it's 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 midnight i think it's past midnight uh so that one like i said was 23 uh less than uh, what they were trying to sell it to me for um, and uh, considered a, uh, a banger on this channel uh, and lastly the last thing I got which is not in as good a condition as I thought it was so I'm a little disappointed this one did come from VC vinyl but I think I paid too much based on this condition of this um, I paid what did I pay Pay thirty four dollars. I don't usually like to do that, um, but it is something I had just talked about in one of my recent videos. 
and how I said that I really wanted to get this this album and uh, one of their others, and I hadn't seen them. And all of a sudden, I saw both of them, <laughs> but I couldn't get the other one because the other one was $100. And I'll tell you why once I show it. Um, but it's got a crease, a couple creases in the cover. Looks like it's got a little bit of ring wear. I'm playing with you guys and not showing it. Oh, whatever. Beastie Boys, check your head. This is a banger as far as, uh, you know, that goes. Um, I, I, like I said before, I'm not big into hip hop, not really big into rap. But when you add real music with it, like real guitars and stuff, that's when I start to like it. And then you got to like the Beastie Boys anyway because they're just funny. Um, but this one's got Jimmy James, Funky Bit, Funky Boss, Pass the Mic, Gratitude, Lighten Up, Finger Looking Good, So What You Want, The Big Hit, The Biz versus The Nuge, Time for Living, Something's Gotta Give, The Blue Nun, Stand Together, Pow, or P-O-W, The Maestro, Groove Homes, uh, Live at PJ's, Mark on the Bus, Professor's Booty, M3s, and Nam Namaste. Um, good album, guys. I mean, I, I, this was when the Beastie Boys, like, they mixed alternative rock punkish kind of stuff with uh with uh, the rap the hip-hop stuff and, and it it really did good so i don't know if you can see on the with the glare but you probably can't there there's like ring wear right there and then down here when i take the plastic off, you, you can kind of see the there's a crease and a crease so that's a little disappointing for you know the price um you know but Again, I'm not huge into having to actually have everything perfect in my life uh, because nothing is. Okay. But I'm going to point it out anyway because that's what we do in life, right? We point out stuff. So look, there you go. You can see it. It's right there. A crease and it kind of works its way down and this one goes all the way through it's not bad it's not it's not a color breaking stuff and there's a bunch of them right here too you know comic book people would flip out if if, if they had a comic book with all that stuff on it but it doesn't oh, there's more at the top <laughs> it's all over the place but it doesn't break the color so it's not too bad um you know uh but i wish i wouldn't have paid 34 dollars for it either but i bid it up and we got the inside the side we've got Okay, that's lyrics. Uh, yeah, that's that's uh, the lyrics at the bottom, so that's good. Uh, don't think we're gonna have anything on inner sleeves, um, but I'm very glad to get this album. Uh, you know, black vinyl. Paper, yeah, poly lined sleeves, or plastic lined anyway. Uh, Grand Royal, typical Grand Royal uh, label for Beast Boy stuff. Uh, I kind of like that label. Uh, I think they do different colors. I I'm pretty sure there's at least a green one. Um, I'm trying to remember, I don't know if they, they do a, a lot of colors, but I think there's a couple different colors for that logo. And I just messed up my my lining. I've never done that before. Uh, there we go. But the, both records are the same. So we got that. So we're at 28 minutes. Um, I'm not going to show this either in this video, um, but I will show these. I'll show them, but I won't. Uh, it'll be a couple of videos because, you know, I got these uh, that I briefly talked about the last video. Um, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show them tonight. Uh, I'm not gonna open them up anyway. Um, so anyway, that's it for this episode. Um, like I said, next episode is 250. I don't know if there's gonna be anything special done for that or not. I, I would probably should. I would like to do something different. Um, but again, like I said, I'm not prepared for that at the moment. So. Um, it may not happen, guys. I mean, it's gonna. There's gonna be a, an episode, but I don't know if it's gonna be some kind of anniversary. Maybe I'll just sit and talk about stuff and 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 try to offend people with controversial uh, 
uh, what do you call it, opinions and stuff. Fountains of Wayne. Holy smoke, I remembered, guys. That's who opened for Smashing Pumpkins. Fountains of Wayne. Uh, one of my favorite alternative rock bands of the era. Um, that was totally random because I was about to press the button and say, we're out of here. Uh, but Fountains of Wayne, yeah, so... So, oh, and did I? I don't know if I said it either, but if I ended that story with that lady uh, after I brought her, you know, son home, and he and he talked about going to Smashing Pumpkins, how awesome it was, and how good a time it was, and you know, I didn't do anything crazy to him or anything, you know, um, not that I ever would, but you know how people think, and um, and then next thing you know, she's calling me, not my aunt, calling me, and asking me to take her son to concerts. So I was like, look, lady. I I'm not the guy that takes kids to concerts. And she goes, well, I'm paying, so yes, you are. And I was like, what? And she, so she bought us tickets to like three or four different things. And I was like, I was like, dude, I said, this might, this is a little bit weird, but, uh, you know, if you're having fun and your mom wants to, you know, you know, wants to send you out of the house, you know, if I'm going, I'll bring you. But we only went to like three or four, I think it was. Uh, I know we went to a festival at uh, at the city park in New Orleans, and Goldfinger played. That was insane. We were standing there, and Goldfinger came on, and I didn't realize a lot as that many people knew Goldfinger. I knew Goldfinger. He knew one song by Goldfinger, and they came on, and I'm telling you, the the crowd of thousands became this instant mosh pit everybody and we were standing right next to each other and we just it just separated us we couldn't you were moving with the crowd you could not you couldn't not move and i can remember him looking over he was over there and i was going this way and we both just did like that and he was like all the way on the other side of the the festival and i was all the way over here and at the end somehow we ended up both of us right back in the middle standing like three feet from each other and we're like well, good. At least we didn't have to find each other, uh, but because I think your mom would have died if I'd have lost her kid. Uh, so anyway, that is really it for this this episode, uh, and um, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.